Praise God. How, how many of you were here just about 10 hours ago in this same auditorium? Raise your hands. On the balcony? Wow, quite a lot of you. Praise God. And the good news is that when I reached home, I reached back at about 1.30 or thereabouts. By the time I slept, it was around 2 a.m. The good news is I sleep very easily. Within five minutes, I'm asleep. That's because of my training as an obstetrician and gynecologist for many, many years. Because time is of essence. So in between 1 a.m., 2 a.m., while waiting for the babies to come, I, I, I will sleep, you know. And as I always boast to my wife, I can actually sleep standing on one leg. <laughs> but it's a, it's a gift from God, okay? It's a gift from God. And if you want to know how to sleep, all right, uh, you will buy me lunch and I'll tell you how to fall asleep. Okay. Now, before we continue, I, I want to show you the wonderful video that our media team did last night. So let's give God a good clap offering for our awesome media team, Fritz, and the manager, and the whole the team, the photographers, and did a wonderful end-of-the-year video. And I, I know many of you have seen it. I've seen it many, many times, and I want to see it again myself. So those of you who have not seen it, it's a summary of what has happened in 2022, and I'll take off from where the video ends, all right? So... Just show the video of Good clap offering. Whoa! Isn't it awesome? 
I don't know about you, even looking at a video, I just sense a dynamism, you know, the vibrancy, because we are inspired by God to build a strong, excellent, and dynamic church that will influence the nation and even impact generations. It's both geographical as well as generational. This church exists not only to influence space, but also time. And you notice that over the Christmas weekend that we've had, how many of you were here for Christmas services? Praise the Lord for you. We had over six, we had 65 salvations. Isn't it amazing? It's a bumper harvest this year. Come on, live, live glory to God. He deserves the highest praise. Amen. He deserves all the glory that we can give to Him. I'm going to share with you today the fourth installment of a quadrilogy of sermons, triology, pentilogy, hexology, heptilogy, but you cannot go backwards beyond trilogy because there's no such thing as a biology of sermons. Today is the fourth installment. I mean, the Lord gave me all these four sermons way back in early December. I just wrote as fast as I could and I penned down all these thoughts. It is sequential. It is progression, progressive. So we started sometime in the middle of December with a new beginning where we did an overview of Ruth. That's why we stopped our pulpit teaching and we will sambong after Chinese New Year, on Ruth. And I shared with you why it is so important that we must choose rightly. The power of choice. Not only the power of choice. You will remember I shared with you, we must also identify correctly. It's not a question of staying neutral. I don't want to identify. No. The key question is, you identify with who? What kind of values do you identify with as you go and work in the world? It's not a matter of should I identify or not, but what or who do you identify with? Then, when you choose rightly, identify correctly, the favour of God follows you. If you choose wrongly, the favor of God cannot follow you. Why? Because you choose according to your flesh. How can the favor of God follow you? And then I shared with you over Christmas, the fundamental baseline of all of this is Jesus Christ. There was once a historical Jesus who came on Christmas Day and I shared with you my testimonies after testimonies including the testimony of my own father who died and had an out-of-body experience. Last night, I continued to share with you that even as we about to step into the new year, the unknown, be comforted, be strengthened, be assured that even though we have an unknown future, we got a known God. So as we put our hands into the hands of God and I unpackage to you in depth and great detail, phrase by phrase, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know God says, not anybody says. If God says, I know, that means He knows. Why? Why? Because he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. He is the first and he is the last. Know what? The plans. The plans is Kazaf. It is the computed plan. It is a plan that God has reckoned and computerized in the same brain, you can say, that created the entire universe. How safe can you be? God says, I know the kazaf I have for you. To do what? 
Three things. I shared with you that this year, God will do for you three things. Well, I take it, I take it. No, no, it's not like that. You have to believe it. You have to get involved and interact with God personally. It's not give it to you like that, no. Because God says, I will prosper you. And the word prosperity is the word, guess what? Shalom. Having the shalom of God is better than having all the money in the world. What is the point of being, nothing wrong with being rich. But do you have the peace of God? To prosper you, the shalom. Not to harm you. In other words, God says, I will give you all my virtue. All that is good in God is yours. Because God delight to bless. He's a good God to hand bike. To give you a hope and a future, an expected end. And I shared with you that the Hebrew concept of time, according to the professor of Old Testament in, of Heidelberg University in Germany, is the man rowing a boat with his back to the front and his face to the, to the back, to the past. It's like the Oxford Cambridge boat race on the River Thames. There's only one person in that boat that faces forwards and he's the coxswain, not the coxswain. He paces, inspires, guides, directs. And as we step into the new year, Jesus Christ is our coxswain. He is the author and is the finisher of our faith. I told you, he is the alpha and is omega. Do you believe it or not? So even as we now step into the future, I want to share with you the fourth installment. After all things said and done, we have to move forwards. This is where I take off from the end of the video, Taking Frontiers, which is a theme for SIBKL for 2023. Five sequential steps. As we take Frontiers, first of all, we must acknowledge there is a moment in time. And from that moment in time, we have translated into a motion. And from the motion, we go move, move, move. And then we will generate and gain momentum. And from gaining momentum, the culmination and the end point is, I call it a movement, is equivalent to a spiritual revival. So when God looks down from heaven, he doesn't care whether Pakatan Harapan wins or Pakistan or what. There are no political parties in heaven. He blesses the nation so that there is peace and harmony. And that's what we pray for so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can continue to spread. Like during the Roman Empire when there was Pax Romana. Because there were roads. Because there was peace in the land. The early church could spread. And finally, the fifth movement. I'm going to share it to you one by one. He said, in the midst of all of this activity, there has to be a morphing, a transformation of your character. If not, it's all wasting time. So I'm going to share with you this message for the first half and in the last 20 minutes or so, I'm going to cast vision for the year. And that's what we will do from now onwards for the whole month of January till Chinese New Year. A moment in time. I call this a God moment. I can't explain it. There is a moment in time when you know, and you know, and you know, this is it. 
you can't describe it. You can't put a finger to it. But you know it's there. And you, you miss it. You miss it. A moment, everybody say a moment in time. One more time. A moment in time. And I want to believe that in all of this that I'm sharing with you today, not because it is the first of January, Pastor, you have to say this. No! I'm saying this to you. There has to be in your life how old you are, how young you are, it doesn't really matter. That you must say to yourself, enough is enough. I cannot continue to live my life like yesteryear. Doing nothing? Waiting to die? What? You hear me say a thousand times. As long as God gives me one breath in my nostril, one calorie of strength inside me, I will serve Him. Can you say that? Don't retire and do nothing. There must be something you can do. La. A moment in time. And I believe that Kairos moment has arrived for all of us to reprioritize, re-look at life for the rest of your days because everything has changed. You know, there is a song. Oh, sorry. Before I go to that song, you know, I was writing this message. The Lord prompted me that Jesus lamented over Jerusalem when he stood at Mount Olives and cried. So there are two times when Jesus cried, you know, not once. At the time when, when his good friend Lazarus died. Jesus wept, but Jesus lamented and wept. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who sent you, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, I forgot the Hebrew thing. Baruch Hava Bashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus lamented. And my prayer for you, my friend, is simply this. I want to pray that Jesus will not lament over you. Because how many times have you heard from this pulpit, move, man, move! You say, put. You refuse to move. And God says, I tell you, your house is left desolate. You know, there is a song that I love very, very much. Sung by Whitney Houston called One Moment in Time. How many of you have heard this song before, raise your hands in the balcony. Serious, uh, I thought I, I was the only one who heard this. 90% of you have heard this, you know. The rest are 10%, where were you? Oh? This song was composed specifically for the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games. One moment in time. But the one that I love most was not Whitney Houston, 
but sung by a lady by the name of Madonna Winner. Especially when she sang it in Belgium. I must have listened to that. I'm not bluffing you, huh? 30, 40, 50, 40, 50 times, you can say, oh, pastor, you are an old romantic sentimentalist, whatever you say. But the lyrics of that song, it ended when you touch that one moment in time. You touch eternity. Touche. Touche. That one moment in time, in your life, not case Sarah, Sarah. As we step into the new year, I'm not, I'm not being hyping things up for you, understand? That I'm sharing with you from the Word of God what I feel God is saying to you and to me on site and online. You have to reprioritize. You have to change the way you do things, the way you live. Young and old. And that one moment in time has to be translated to emotion. Move, man, move. Don't stagnate. Don't get stuck in the mud and all you do is like the wheel churning out mud and you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the stupid hole. That's all you've done. What kind of life is that? When I say move, I mean you move in the things of God. How do you move? One step at a time. No fear. No fear at all. Because last night, I shared with you all in depth, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. If your life and your future is in the hands of a known God, you have no fear. Read this with me. Can you read it with me? Because what I share with you is layer upon layer. But before we move forwards and take frontiers, you have to believe this and own this and take it for yourself and not because of your wife, understand? Not because of your spouse. You have to internalize it yourself because when you reach the gates of heaven, your wife won't be there. Your spouse won't be there. You have to face God yourself. You know, listen to me very carefully. I shared with you about my dad on Christmas Day. I remembered that about 10 days before he passed away, after 10 years of serving God, he was not well. I was visiting him, talking to him. And suddenly, I saw his face turn pale. I caught over his hand. I said, Dad, are you okay? For one minute, he was scared. I prayed. I prayed in tongues. And then he calmed down. I said, Dad, what happened? He says that I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Even for him, uh, at that moment when he, 10 days later, he passed away. And I really believe that when David said in Psalm 23, when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. There is a valley of the shadow of death when you cross over in nona seconds. There is a valley. But because we have Jesus, there is no fear. There is no fear. Unknown future, known God. So we have to take this step 
holding on to this verse. Come on, read this with me. Can you read it with me? Is it okay with you? So let's claim this verse for 2023 and beyond. Come on, read it loud. Is it okay with you? All right. You guys woke up a bit late. Huh? I woke up very early. I was like, I don't need three, four hours sleep, you know. Okay? All right, you read it with me. Is it okay with you? All right. Are you ready? Top, bottom, left, right. It on site online. One, two, three. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and of you. One more time. One more time. You're ready. One, two, three. Whoa. The plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Do you believe this? God says, I know. No fear. No fear at all. And how do we move forward? Lanka, Demi, Lanka. God says to Joshua, I give you every place that you set foot on. In other words, if you don't move, no gain. Every step you set foot on, I give it to you. But you must step forward. Lanka, Demi, Lanka. Everybody say Lanka, Demi, Lanka. Everybody say Lanka, Demi, Lanka. In other words, one step at a time. But one step you must take. You've got to set in motion. But you say, Pastor, set in motion what? Ah? Don't go stick it jam. Ah. I'll let you know. And as you begin to step forward, God moves with you. And the picture I had when I prepared this message was that even God himself, after 400 years of silence in the intertestamental period, when God was silent. Now the fact is this, you heard me say this before and I repeat it again. When God is silent, it does not mean that God is absent. Where do you think God is when God is silent? He is still where He always has been, on the throne. Right? The fact that God is silent doesn't mean He is abdicated from the throne. No. He is still in control. Understand? He just don't want to talk to you anymore. And we in Malaysia have experienced years of silence. And many of you have. Because of your intransigence. Because of your recalcitrance. Because of your going away from God. God is silent. But today I want to believe that God is saying to you again, move man, move. After 400 years of silence, God moved. The angel Gabriel appeared to Elizabeth and John the Baptist was born to prepare the way. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and Jesus was conceived. And, they, and God moved the heart of Augustus Caesar to issue a decree so the entire Roman world went to have a census and Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Ephrata as was prophesied, God moved. And if God moved, you got to move. When the glory cloud has moved on, you cannot stay there or you will dry up in the sun. You know what I'm saying? Move, man, move! So I don't know what God is wanting you to say. You have to move forward. Ask God, what do you want me to do? And as you begin to, oh, we will talk more about this this year. We will talk more about God moving 
transiting, transforming, transforming. So we'll do Ruth after Chinese New Year. And then after that, we will do aspects of the Luke's Gospel because we want to amplify on when after the intertestamental period, what happened? How did Jesus move in the new era? And we will use Luke's Gospel and, and look at some aspects of the life of Jesus. And then after that, from July onwards, we will do 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy from the pulpit. Now, this is how we do it at SIBKL. We study books. That's what we do. We value the Word of God. So this is what we do. And even as we begin to do that, can I encourage you, we have to continue to seek God. You must want to move on with God. And the best way to do that is to pray. And so from tomorrow, not tomorrow, Tuesday onwards, every early morning at 6 a.m. to 7.30, we have a prayer altar downstairs in Sang 2. And we have done that for years. Hundreds of people come. I've seen children, families, with, with, with students in the school uniform. They come and pray 7 o'clock, they go. Isn't it a good way to start the year, to, to consecrate the entire week to God? Do you think so? Pray. And then on Saturday morning, at 7.30 to 10 a.m., we want to anoint families. Anoint your children. So that when your children sit for the exam, they do well. And I'm not boasting. In this church, we have students who have gone to Princeton, Yale, Columbia, Oxford, Cambridge, NUS. I didn't say you see them later. <laughs> London's LSE. Name it. They do well. Understand? We want to bless you so that you and your children will do well. But pastor, what is anointing? Well, you come on Saturday and I share with you. Why is it it's so important, this prophetic act? It's not us. It's God who wants to bless you. And from that motion, as we gather speed, there's a momentum. In Newtonian physics, Momentum is P equals MV, which is mass times velocity. I'm trying to act short. Actually, it's all Google. <laughs> In linear physics, what it called linear momentum or translational momentum, the greater the mass is a vector quantity. See, there's magnitude and its direction the greater the velocity, the greater the P, which is momentum. And the best, best illustration I have is when a cue ball in pool is struck and the cue ball hit the rack. The momentum of the cue ball is now translated to all the, the, the rack there and the rack totally split. And it goes all over the pool, the, the table right now. Is translational linear momentum. And it is mass times velocity. In other words, the greater the mass, the greater the momentum. The greater the velocity, the greater the momentum. And there's nothing wrong with numbers. So don't get shy of all Oh yeah, I don't want to join a big church. What? What's wrong with a big church? There is a critical mass. There are things that the big churches can do. Can you imagine all the churches in Malaysia, only small, small ones? There's nothing wrong with a small church. But so don't, don't get that kind. Hey, you're a big church, I do one lah. You go and ask every senior pastor in small churches, do the, 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 you ask them and see, you want the church to grow or not? Of course they will lah. There is a critical mass. There are a lot of things that we can do because we can do it en masse. We have strength, momentum, equals mass times velocity. There's nothing wrong with growing a big church. And I'll show you with you in a short while. We have to grow big and yet grow, be caring. We have to care. 
people, because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Correct or not? John Maxwell. I'll share it with you towards the end. How we address this in this church. But the mass is not only numbers, understand? It is also the weight, the presence of God in your life, the kabod. You see, the same word, Hebrew word, kabod for glory and presence is weight. That's why when the glory of God filled the temple in Solomon's temple, when he dedicated it to God, the priest could not get up. Why? Because the kabod was so heavy. So the heavier the kabod is in your life, the greater your momentum. That's why I say pray. You have to read the Word of God. Pastor Lee Chu will share with you next week. You have to build up your spirit man. I can't do it for you. Cheering messages once on a weekend is tachukop la. You have to want to grow. Move, man, move. Don't stay the same as you were. That's my point. And even as you begin to move, you get more and more momentum. And it all depends on you and now because Gorbachev says, if not now, then when? If not you, then who? Your wife? Your spouse? You got to move. If you don't want to move, then nothing I can do for you. Lah. Man, you have to look at life differently. Pluck yourself out from that mundane routine and that sinkhole, that, that sink set, that quicksand that is pushing you down. Pull yourself up, man. Pull yourself up. Don't dwallow in self pity. Move and bring your family with you. Bring your family with you. Man, and I speak this to men, you are the head of the house. Come on. Take leadership. Move your family into new horizons and uncharted territories. Unknown future, known God. For I know the plans I have for you. Do you believe it or not? If you believe it, then you have to move. And then you gain momentum. And as you begin to do that, it will culminate in a movement. You will have a personal revival in your life. Don't talk about revival of the nation first. Huh? It's too objective. It's too impersonal. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about every one of you on site and online. Your personal revival. How do I measure that? Your love for God. Your love for His house. Your love to connect with God in the prayer altars. Your love for the Word of God. Your love to serve Him. Not for honour, not for applause. Man, please lah, there's something you can do. One, lah. Every one of us. Personal revival. Let 2023 be a year of personal revival that you revive again. But more important than that is collectively, not only for SIBKL alone, but also together with all the other churches, let us believe that there will be a national spiritual revival. Come on, let's give God a clap offering. Whoa! I believe. May not be this year. The reason why God gave us sesuatu faja yang baru, sesuatu era yang baru, sesuatu ir, subo yang baru, sebab masa ini ialah penuh harapan. Do you think so? It's full of hope. It's now for us to take the Kairos moment and believe that there will be a revival in our lifetime. That's what I pray to God. God, don't let my eyes close and see the gelombang yang ketiga. Now, God may not answer my prayer. My bucket list is God. You are so gracious, so merciful to me. 
Let me see it. And let me experience it. Let me give you a date. October 5th to 7th is the 50th anniversary of the Barrio Revival that happened, I think, on the 6th of October, thereabouts, at 4 p.m. in Barrio, the Holy Spirit fell. So this year in Mary, thousands will gather together to celebrate the 50th Barrio Revival. And hundreds from this church will be flying over. I've already booked my flight, believe it or not. And I think I've already booked my accommodation. If I were you, I'll do it because no more. Go as a cell. Cell outing. Isn't it marvellous? And I believe that all of these are the culmination of the years and the funds that we've invested big time into East Malaysia. Remember Madam Pentecostal? I believe that in 2019, in November, when this took place, September, is it? Or September, 14, 15 September, 2019, before COVID struck, the atmosphere over Kuching over, how many of you were there? Come and show me a little bit. 40% of you only. That means, praise the Lord, 60% of you are new. Isn't it amazing? Come on, let's give God a clap of We have grown. We have grown. Many of you are new. I'm saying this to you, my friend. This is the mandate. This is the mantle God has placed specifically upon SIBKL to impact East Malaysia. And you I, and I know that in GE14, this is the key players, the stakeholders for the future of our nation. It's paying dividends. And you notice that here, in Malam Pentecostal, is Bishop Simon Poe, Donald Jewett, and all the heads of the... Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist churches, all were there. And up to today, they are still united as one. And we're going to take this forward, understand? Revival. God is going to come how, when, I don't know. All we need to do now is to prepare the ground, that's all. Put in the coconut husk, put in the twigs, put in the, water, uh, the, 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 the paper, Put it all nicely and pray. Lah. Like what Elijah did, remember, in Mount Sinai. Lord, send fire. That's the prerogative of God. Don't know how, don't know when, but you will come. All we need to do, prepare the way of the Lord. That's all we need to do. And the fifth moment is very important. In the midst of all of this, there has to be a morphing on the inside of you. It comes from the word metamorphosis. It's a radical developmental change of form, structure, and substance. In other words, there is a total radical transformation from the inside out. As we do this, it will be a different you if you do this and you don't even know it. But suddenly your wife recognizes that hey, you're no more that grumpy anymore, no. You're no more that angry anymore, no. You have changed. Your office colleagues will see something has changed in you. You have morphed. You have metamorphosed. It's not just a makeover. A makeover is an external change and internally you're still the same like these Korean people. <laughs> they have just made overs. Lang Chai. But what is the point? If they are not changed internally, correct or not? Am I right? This is not a makeover. It is a change from a tadpole to a frog. From a caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. 
God wants every one of you to be beautiful flowers. Not a frog, but beautiful butterflies. <laughs> but the principle is still there. You must metamorphose. You have to change, transform radically. And the verse that comes to my mind is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Come, read this with me. Read this with me. Are you ready? Once again, I want you to read Scripture, understand? All right, this is casting vision. Now, I'm not expounding a passage of Scripture. All right, but relevant passages stand out. Come on, read this with me. Again, loud, huh? loud. Are you ready? One, two, three. Whoa! Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but form by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Notice the order. You have to be renewed in the transforming of your mind. Pastor Dishu shared last night about the breakthrough anointing. Now you must have a new mindset, a new eyesight, a new heartbeat. It's the renewing of your mind. After that, then you can know what the perfect will of God is. If you continue to have a carnal mind, you cannot follow and do the will of God. Does it make sense? He says by the renewing of your mind, uh, he did not say by the removing of your mind, uh, don't be brainless, understand? Don't be stupid. He's not asking you to be brainless. He's asking you to think with the mind that God has given to you. But renew it, metamorphose. Think the thoughts of God. Think how I can advance the kingdom of God in my work. How I can honour the Lord. How I can make use of every day available to pray for the sick in your office, to witness to some, to encourage somebody. Twenty twenty two. I sounded out two key movements of SIBKL as we move forwards. I said that we have reached an, a season, a time of transition. I will transit on in the next few years. And I said in the process, we need to metamorphose, we need to transform. And in 2023, I want to add in one more movement which is taking frontiers, which is a theme for this year moving forwards. What is a frontier? A frontier is an extreme limit of settled land. In other words, you have to push boundaries. You have to go where no man has ever been, uncharted waters beyond which lies uncharted territory. But will I be afraid? No. Why? Here be scorpions, here be dragons, but here be God. Unknown future, known God. You are safe. But we have to move forward. If God says move, we move. Lah. So what frontiers? In SIBKL, moving forwards, five frontiers. And we must capture them. And you will hear more of this in the coming days and weeks and months. And even years. Of course, is we do it and build upon layer upon layer. What are the five frontiers? Number one, next generation. Number two, family. Number three, digitalization and media. Number four, Sabah Sarawak. And number five, pastoral care. These are the frontiers that we will take and capture in the coming months, weeks, and I want you to join me. Next generation. Praise God, we have wonderful next generation pastors. Amen? Whoa! Come on, let's give God a good clap offering for our next generation pastors. So now what do we have? 
We have Pastor Jeremy Pua, who is now the pastor in charge of Kids Zone, Thought Zone, and Pastor Lindy Ong, who oversees the children's ministry. Your children will be taken care of. And then we have Narrow Street, praise God, Pastor Sean Quick. Wow! Where is he? Somewhere there. And pastors behind her, Pastor Stephanie Tan, who brings in depth and prayer. Whoa, isn't that amazing? And then we have got the young adults. We have Pastor Miranda Kwa. Whoa! And then we have wonderful young adult pastors. Pastor Isaac Ling, Pastor Aaron Tan, Pastor Adele Cha, and Pastor Kim Lian. Don't you think it's high time that the wife of Pastor Isaac now becomes a pastor? They will make a formidable team. So it's very important. Now, Pastor Isaac will talk more about it in two weeks' time. How we push this frontier of the next generation. Not marginally, I think the older folks understand. I want you to know that. I want you to know that. As long as I'm here, you will be well taken care of. And I'm going to be here for another five more Olympic Games. Four more Olympic Games, minimum. Five more World Cups. Whoa! Just to give you a head start, this year we're going to hold a massive, humongous children's rally here. We're going to reach out to the young parents. We're going to impact community. Even as I speak, a team is already working behind the scenes. Want to win children for the Lord, the next generation, start them young. And then in 2024, we will work towards a fantastic Supernatural Young Adults Conference. Whoa! Why supernatural? We expect signs and wonders. We expect young people to pray and then there'll be signs and wonders. And by that time, 2024, we will have a new army of God, young adults. They will take SIBKL to the next 20 years. This is our plan. We move forwards. Motion, momentum, Revival. Family. Praise the Lord for Pastor Jeffrey Chua. Amen. Who hates our family ministry. Families are important. Do you think so? Yeah. I, I came last night at the watch night service. I was standing outside and I was so happy to see families coming together to close the year and enter the new year as a family. And I see families here. Families are important. And we care for your family. There's nothing better to see your children do well, not only in their studies, but spiritually, amen? And marry well. So that the God legacy that is in you is now passed from generation to generation for a thousand generations. Don't you want that? Families is important and it matters to us in SIBKL. And this is a massive frontier. How many of you believe that digitalization and media is a frontier we must conquer? Come, raise your hands to me. Raise your hands. Those in the balcony, raise your hands. Come on. Do you think it's important? Why? Because the digital space is a spiritual territory. If you don't capture it, the enemy will capture it and influence your children. Could I not? Why? Because this is what happens. It's the touch screen generation. We cannot run away from that. We have to capture it. We have to move, digitalize the media. We have to go. And as I talk, we are moving, believe me, big time on this. Revamping the whole media of the church. Getting outside help if it's necessary. The experts. 
Believe me, we are moving. And churches that do not believe in this, they just don't go forward. They regress. Believe me, believe me. We have to move forward to take territories. The fourth territory is so important. It's Sabah, Sarawak, Semenanjung, the East Malaysians. And I cannot emphasize the importance of this. Given the new era and the new chapter in the Malaysian politics, we have to continue to invest and strengthen the East Malaysian church Therein lies the future of your children and my children, understand? We have to do it. It's a battle, a spiritual battle, and we are called and privileged to fight. And even as, as early as September, October last year, even before the GE15 results came, we met up with the people from the Ebans, the Eban Revival Ministry, we focus on the Ebans in Sarawak because we believe that this is a tribe where the next revival will come. The third wave, Golombang Jang Tiga, will come. The Ebans. So we work together with the Eban Revival Ministry. They came down to meet us in a boardroom. And then later on, a few days later, we all went up to Sabah. And we met with the president of SIB Sabah, Pastor Jerry Dusing. And we strategized for next year. And then after that, they came down. The, the BEM Sarawak, Pastor Bina Agong, came down to meet us. And then not only that, the Protestant Church of Sabah. What I'm trying to say to you is, we have to invest big time and continue to do so because therein lies the key stakeholders for Malaysia. And our focus is on the Ebans. The Ebans. At the moment, we are supporting 67 evangelists. God willing, we want to tamba it so that the evangelists can reach out more and more in the interior. And this is, what, and this is uh, 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 the Muka Bilingan Mission Center that we built together with FGBMF. Right in the interior of Sarawak. Why? Because this serves as a supply, a, a rehat, a supply it's like climbing out Mount, 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 Mount Everest, you know. There are seven camps, right? This is where they supply, they resupply, they rest, they re hard, they, re, they recoup, they retrain. Right in the interior of Sarawak so that we can go deeper and deeper into the Rejang Basin. This is the strategy that we have. And God has called SIBKL to do it. If not you, then who? You know, now and when, no? We have to do it. And here we have kampongs, after kampongs, entire kampongs saved and bottled water baptized. And there's this evangelist reaching out to this old woman that immediately she burned all her charms. It's power encounters, my friend. Power encounters. Power encounters. Spiritual warfare. Even though we cannot fight on the front line, we can support them. Don't you agree? Come on, let's give God a clap offering if you agree with me. This is where we are going. If you come to SIBKL, this is where we are going. And this is what God has called us to do. And finally, the last frontier. Can I have the worship team on board? Pastoral care. Why? Because John Maxwell says, people don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. And I'm very conscious the pastors of this church are very conscious that we, 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 we are lacking on this, especially post-pandemic. There's so much stress, depression, families' dynamics are fractured. People are now coming out. Young people seeing therapists. What? It's norm. It's a normal thing. They are not cuckoo. They are not, they are not mad. They are just stressed. So the church got to come in. 
to increase our pastoral staff. So what do we do? We increase our pastoral complement by appointing cell lay pastors. They are lay pastors because they still work. But because they have pastoral gifts, we recognize that and we appoint them so that they care for cells. So we have here Pastor Joseph and Esther, Pastor Twen and Jackie, Pastor Daniel, Pastor Kamala, let's give a clap for all of them. They are willing to serve. To take care of God's house. And we also appointed more ministry lay pastors. Pastor Eddie Quay, taking care of Golden Eagles, the senior citizens. You know, this guy got tremendous pastoral heart, you know. You know, one of the most poignant pictures I saw was sometime during the COVID time. A homeless man passed away. Nameless, nobody, no relatives. And when Pastor Eddie Quay heard about it, he alone went to the crematorium and did a wake service. One person! So that this homeless man can have a decent cremation. Who will do that? Only those with the heart of God understand. We need to love. We need to care. Pastor Kenneth Wong helping Pastor Gilbert in in the Chinese service and Pastor John Ng and Kit in the whole Connect ministry. And we have Pastor Andy Lowe. Whoa! For the first time in SIBKL. How many of you know Pastor Andy Lowe? Raise your hands. Wow, a good 30% of you, not a lot. He was the one who started our children's ministry, you know. He comes back now after 10 years. Seasoned, matured, more equipped. And he now becomes the first community pastor of SMCC, linking LCC with Sunway Mass Community and the Chinese Church and building up Kid Station. And I can foresee and predict that literally hundreds of souls from SMCC will be won for Jesus Christ in the coming days. Amen. Because we touch community. We want to bless them. You saw in the, in the video how the young people went out for Christmas time to distribute gifts. Come on. That's what the church is all about. Bless the community. That's Pastor Kim Lian. Doing leadership, disciple, etc. So let me close by summarizing this. As we move forward in the coming days, five movements. And you take into consideration all that I've shared with you. A new beginning. God with us. Unknown future, known God. And now, move man. There has to be a moment in time where you say, God, I want to move. I just don't want to touch and go. I don't want just to spectate. I want to be involved. How you seek God. The first thing you need to do is you have to recognize there has to be a Kairos moment in your time. You miss it, you miss it. But the glory cloud will move on without you. Understand? Listen to me very carefully. There is a moment in time when you touch eternity. And that moment, I believe, I'm not hyping things up, is now. You have to move, set the motion in concrete terms. So that even as the coming days, you will gain momentum. As you gain momentum, there will come a spiritual revival in your own life, in your family, in the workplace. The place where you work, they will revive because you carry the, the presence of God. And I want to believe that there will be a spiritual revival in our nation. But all the time, there is a metamorphosis. There is a morphing so that at the end of the day, every one of us will become more and more like Jesus. 
that is also the end point, understand? So that we become more Christ-like, understand? Last time you were bad tempered, now no more. Last time you were you were angry, but now no more. Last time you were bitter, now no more. Last time you were this and that, but now no more. Why? Because more and more of Jesus is expressed and formed inside of you. There's a morphing. And I believe that even as we begin to do that, this is going to be a wonderful year for all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads as we close. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for the word. I want to say that even as we close, I want to make, an, or not for you to come forward, but for you to respond to the word of God. If you feel in your spirit that somewhere in this message, something that I have shared struck a chord in your heart and you resonate with it, it's like frequency. You resonate with it, you see. Somehow the frequency in your heartbeat is the same as the frequency from heaven. And you know and you know that you want to change. You want to move forward. You want to move forward with God. I want you to stand. By standing, you say to me, Pastor, 2023, I want it to be different. I want to seek the face of God so that there is a new assignment in my life. By standing, you say, no one looking around with you and God. By standing, you make a commitment to God and say, this year is going to be different for me, my family, so that literally, God, you search my heart. Those in the balcony as well, you stand. By standing, you say, Pastor, I want to rededicate and commit my life to God afresh, a new beginning a new beginning let the old go let the old go no matter what it is let go and let God but today by you stand you say pastor I hear the word of God not only your words but I'm excited I'm excited for myself my family my work my business and I want to believe that because you commit your life afresh to God by standing, God sees your heart. It's not what you can give to Him, my friend. No, not at all. It's who you are. Your heart's desire. And I want to believe that collectively, God has called you to this church so that together we move forward to take frontiers. Hallelujah. Thank you so much in you. Thank you so much. For 99% of you are standing. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bless everybody on site as well. If you can do it, raise your hands. Those of you online. You can stand also if you want. God sees you wherever you are, whether you're in Singapore, or whether you're in Penang or Australia. Come on. This is the Kairos moment, my friend. This is the Kairos moment. Let's not miss it. And don't allow Jesus to lament over us. No, 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 not at all. Let there be joy. That Jesus is overjoyed, not lament. My friend, no. That He sees a church that is faithful, you know. That is faithful. Thank you. Thank you for your affirmation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We bless your holy name. May we step into the new year. We are safe. Oh, Rashanda Karadadada Syria Karamandai. We bless your holy name this day, Lord. We bless your holy name. And may the coming days be wonderful days. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's raise our hands to the Lord as we close. Father, you said, Jesus said in John chapter 9, verse 4 work while it's still day because night comes when no man can work when Jesus says night comes when no man can work he means night comes when no man can work Julius Subi around 2017 says five years he gives to Malaysia God soaked him 
if the church don't arise, they will miss the moment. We just made it. This is the moment for our country. We just made it. So let's not miss it. Kapidine. Kapidine. That's what John F. Kennedy said in front of the Berlin Wall before it collapsed. Seize the day. Kapidine. And I believe that when we seize the day, walls will tumble, understand? Hurdles will collapse. And the army of God and the kingdom of God will advance in our nation. But it is incumbent that God finds a church that is faithful. And I want to believe that SIBKL is one of those churches. There are many more. We stay the course. Stay the course, my friend. Stay the course. And so, Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the beginning of a new year. Thank you that you have seen us through all these years and you will continue to be with us in the coming days. Someone has said that successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. In other words, we must be consistent. Cannot touch and go. If we do consistently what other people do occasionally, we will yet see a sustained move of God. Understand? Stay the course. Don't run away. Don't give in. Stay the course. Stretch our hands as we close. So Father, in Jesus' name, separate us now with your blessing. And we commit the rest of this day and this year to your hands. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face upon every one of you and your loved ones and always grant you shalom, shalom, prosperity. In Jesus' precious name, we pray because you will say aloud. Let's give God a good clap offering. God bless you. Come next week and Pastor Lee Chu will continue on our vision casting for the year. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.